Hello, in this video we're going to look at an unbalanced one-way ANOVA F test statistic. And really this is a follow-up video on a request. I have a video called Power and Sample Size in R, you know, for the unbalanced one-way ANOVA case. And Kimmy Chin, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, asked if I could um, talk about why the F test statistic follows a central F under the null hypothesis and a non-central F under the alternative hypothesis. And so this is a follow-up video for her or him. So here we're gonna the uh, we're gonna just do a generic example with theory mixed in. Um, the model that we looked at in the video of power and sample size, we looked at the scalar form, which was this. It's the means model where each data point has some group mean and some overall error term and yeah so the the yij yij is the response for element j in group i these are the the group means or the treatment means they're fixed unknown parameters and the error term we're going to assume is normally distributed which we need when we develop the f test so this is the model that we used in in the video but I think it's much easier to talk about it in matrix form so we're going to do the theory in matrix notation so I want to introduce that so here um, we have y equals x beta plus epsilon and the ni's are the group means or the I mean the group sample sizes And if we add up all the sample sizes for the A groups, we're going to call it capital N. Now, here, I probably should put some sort of vector symbol above these vectors. But I think it made my page too cloudy, you know, when I handwrite it. So I hope that it's going to be understood that when vectors, you know, when they're vectors, it's understood. So Y is an N by 1 vector. X is an N by A matrix, B is an A by 1 matri uh, vector, and Epsilon is also a, a uh, N by 1 vector that's normally distributed, IID uh, normally distributed. So here is the design matrix for the means model up there. So we have, you know however many subjects there are or patients or elements in group one that's how many there's that many ones that way when you multiply this vector times that it you get it times the group mean and same way here so it's a so it's sort of block diagonal with ones down the diagonal so some more notation for the y, yi's. We have a, a dot means sum over that variable. So if it's yi dot, means we're summing over the j's. And so that means yi dot bar means it's the sample mean for group i. Uh, y dot dot means sum over both of those indexes. And then if you put a y dot dot bar, that's the grand mean. So it says add up all your y's, your data, divide by n, how many there are, and that's your grand mean. So now, and again, this is, you know, to, to put this video in four pages, we're going to have to leave out some of the proofs from, from my statements. And this is to nudge you in a direction to do more research so here for a projection matrix onto the column space of ends we're going to let that be M but before we we let this capital U of N cross N denote a matrix of ones which can be represented as this so the the uh, projection matrix onto the column space of N is written like this where this is the generalized inverse so this is a non-singular, I mean, it's a singular ma uh, matrix that we're taking the inverse of. So it has to be what's called a generalized inverse. I kind of like the more Penrose uh, or the 
yeah, generalized inverse. So then this matrix here ends up being block diagonal with one over n i. So there, this is a matrix of ones, uh, n i n one by n one. We're dividing by n one, and we do that for each group. So a note is that that this is symmetric. So if you take its transpose, then it equals itself. And m times m, when you do this multiplication out, you get m back. And those two requirements there, symmetric and idempotent, means it's a projection matrix. And then because we're using the the design matrix, when we develop that, it means it's it's a projection matrix onto the column space of x. So the rank of m is a. M times our response vector can it ends up looking like this. Now, a projection matrix on the, the a column of ones is written like this. Here, uh, one is an n by one vector, and so um, if we're going to let J be the projection matrix onto the column space of one, you know, a vector of ones. It's written like this. Here it's uh, non-singular, so we can take the inverse, and this ends up being just one over n, and then times you know that, which is uh, one over n times cap u of n n. So note that the column space of ones is actually a subset of the column space of x, which implies that the projection matrix. M of the projection matrix column space of X times the projection matrix column space of ones, you get J back. So this projects everything back into the column space of X. Um, this is symmetric. It's a you know this is it's a matrix of ones all divided by n minus one. So the transpose is um, you know symmetric. J times J, you get J back. So symmetric and idempotent imply it's a projection matrix but the way we developed it here means it's a projection matrix on the column space of one so j times our response vector y is uh, you can be written as a, a vector of ones times the grand mean the rank of j is one these are all identical so it, it all reduces to one now when we partition the uh, sum of squares, we have the total sum of squares, the regression sum of squares, or treatment sum of squares, and the error sum of squares, and um, also called the residual sum of squares. And this is as as stand, you know in scalar notation, it's this, and it can be written in matrix notation times this, where those were those pro, uh, projection matrices. I is the identity matrix. So now we're going to look at the, some formulas for quadratic forms. So if y is a normal, uh, y is a, a, a random vector that's multivariate normal mu uh, i, and let m be a perpendicular projection matrix, then this quadratic form is a chi-squared. It's a non-central chi-squared with rank, with degrees of freedom, rank of m, and the non-centrality parameter. Uh, of this mu prime m mu. So if if uh, y is a, a random vector that's multivariate normal, and if a times b is zero and a and b are symmetric, then we know that these two quadratic forms are independent. So that means y m j y. Since this is a projection matrix, it's symmetric and idempotent, we know it's a non-central chi-squared with, with this relationship. Okay, And notice this part here, and that's what I used in the video of power and sample size. Then, So this is a regression sum of squares, and so the residual sum of squares can be written like this. But this I minus M is a projection matrix. It's actually a projection matrix on the orthogonal complement of the column space of X. So that means when we multiply this out, X times this projection matrix is going to be zero.
So that's why the residual sum of squares is always a central chi-square distribution. Um, the, we take these two uh, projection matrices and multiply them and we get uh, zero so we know that these two quantities are independent so that says these yeah these two quantities are independent and then we set up this ratio of this the regression sum of squares divided by its degrees of freedom divided by the residual sum of squares divided by its degrees of freedom and because these chi-squares are independent, divided by the respective degrees of freedom, that's how we define an F distribution. And so this is the non-centrality parameter in matrix forms. But when you multiply this out, you get this right here. And this is what I used in the video. So now if the null hypothesis is true, that all the mu i's are equal, it says that, that they're going to equal the grand mean. So this goes to zero, which says where it's a central F distribution. And if they're not equal, then then this is the non-centrality parameter is not zero, and it's a non-central F distribution. And so this is roughly why, under the null, it's a central F distribution, and under the alternative, it's a non-central F distribution. Um, and for more detail, you can watch the video on uh, the power and sample size on R, unbalanced one-way ANOVA. And there we go through calculating power and sample size for this case. Well, that's all I have for today. Hope you enjoyed it. I did. Uh, please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.